cyber security is hard to learn. And if you spend any time on YouTube, I'm sure you have gone through Keylogger tutorials, Kali Linux, and password cracker tutorials. The thing is, is if you don't have the foundation of what cybersecurity is, this is mostly just theater and you're probably wasting up your time because you don't understand the underlying fundamentals to be able to go and apply these techniques in really any situation. In this video, I'm going to go over cybersecurity in the broadest sense to give you a good idea of everything that goes into the field of cybersecurity. Also, if you're more interested in exploring further into these topics, I do have a link below in the description if you want to go check that out. Since the beginning of time, it's always been a game of attack and defense, and it is no difference in computers. There will be a team or a tribe that attacks one tribe, and then the other tribe will have to come up with defenses against those attacks, and then the game just keeps going and going and going. It never really ends. According to Cisco, a successful cybersecurity approach deals with multiple layers of protection spread across computers, networks, applications, and data. In order to successfully defend yourself from these attacks, uh, you have to have all of these in place. What are the three main goals of cybersecurity? All of cybersecurity seeks to protect from malicious actors from these three things. And this is called the CIA triad. And if you can understand these three things, you'll have a really good idea of what exactly the cybersecurity field is. Those are confidentiality. So that is not letting people get access to your data and see really important data. The second thing is integrity. Is the data actually correct or did someone go in and change that data for their own purposes? A really good example of this is say someone hacked into the school system and then changed their grades from an F to an A. This would be a breach in integrity. The third really important one and often overlooked is availability. Are resources available when you need them? For instance, when your home internet goes down, that is an example of an issue with availability and you can't access the internet. And in order to protect these three things, many layers are put into place. The multi-layer approach to cybersecurity is going to include the rest of this video. There are time stamps below. The first really important one, and I put it here on first because it's often overlooked, is governance, risk, and compliance. And it sounds so boring, I get it. But essentially GRC or governance, risk and compliance in cybersecurity is processes and policies that organizations put in place to manage their exposure to risk. If we go deeper, governance is essentially the act of making decisions about how to protect your computer systems and data from security threats. This is usually done at C-suite, but often involves other people of the team and frontline employees to make better decisions. It requires a really good understanding of threats to the organization. So usually there are uh, risk assessments done to find out what exactly the threats are and how exposed to risk they are. Which goes into risk management and that is identifying, assessing, and mitigating risks. This includes the potential and probability of a threat to happen and the impact on business operations. A lot of people think it's just technical things and that if you can put up that firewall, you should, but you always have to do a cost benefit analysis. If that firewall is actually more expensive than the potential impact that threat could have, then there's no point in putting up that firewall. And that's kind of how the C-suite management thinks. It's not all just about security. It's also about cost benefit analysis. Is it going to be worth my money in the long run? There are various risk management frameworks that companies go off of. The most common is the NIST cybersecurity framework. This provides a comprehensive approach to cybersecurity and includes identifying, protecting, detecting, responding, and recovering from incidences. The third piece of this 
often looked at and cringe in people who work in cybersecurity is compliance. And compliance is very important, especially if you want to stay into business. Essentially, it's the practice of following security protocols and procedures in order to protect information systems. There are many different compliance organizations and it's going to definitely be dependent on the industry that you're in. Each one comes with its own set of requirements for operating systems. The most common compliance framework is NIST, the National Institute Standards of Technology, ISO, International Organization Standardization 27001 and 27002. And not following these compliance standards can lead to really hefty fines. So it's in the company's best interest to actually follow these compliance guidelines as it will save them money. An example is the Marriott was hit with 24 million GDPR privacy fine. Another one is Capital One was fined $100 million of a breach affecting 100 million people in the US and 6 million in Canada. They were able to obtain personal information and credit card. And the reason for its fine was that its failure to establish effective risk management processes when migrating operations to the public cloud. Another one is a health insurer had to pay 7 million, almost 7 million to settle data breach affecting over 10.4 million people, Primera Blue Cross. It's because they had violations to HIPAA, which is a set of compliance requirements that you must meet. Otherwise you're going to get fined heavily. So next one, which I would say is also equally as important is network and infrastructure security. If you don't know what a network is, it's essentially how data gets from one computer to the other. If you have a, a home Wi-Fi and router setup, that can, is considered a home network. Now these can get into thousands and thousands of devices that are all connected. So it can become a little bit complicated. In the most basic form, network security is protecting your computer networks from unauthorized use or access. And that includes both the hardware and software systems, as well as the data that flows between them. And the benefits of network security are extremely obvious. It helps keep your information confidential, which is one of the main pillars of cybersecurity. It can also prevent viruses and malware from infecting your system. It also ensures the availability of your network, which is another pillar of cybersecurity, which is availability. The most common type of network attacks are ones that affect availability. That is because of the denial of service attack and distributed denial of service attacks. And these are when you overload your network with traffic or request, making it un unaccessible to legitimate users incident of this was with the Reddit attack back in 2016, where it was a target of the denial of service attack, which caused the site to go offline for several hours. Another common network attack is called man in the middle attack in which an attacker will intercept the communication between two parties and view or modify that data being exchanged. That violates confidentiality and also integrity that theft of confidential data can be detrimental to national security or your company staying in business because competitors can gain that knowledge. The next really common network attack is called DNS spoofing. And this is also called DNS cache poisoning. And this is a type of cyber attack that exploits vulnerabilities within the DNS to redirect traffic intended for one website to another. So if you don't know what DNS is, it's essentially what is used, you don't have to type in numbers and you can type in like google.com instead of like 8.8.9.2 or something like that. This is important because it can redirect to a false website such as your bank. And then when you go in to log in with those credentials you would usually use on your bank, they essentially can capture those credentials and then go log on to your bank and then do transfers with your money. It can also be used to launch phishing campaigns and also denial of service attacks. Uh, it's relatively sophisticated, so you're not really going to have script kitties coming, which are just people messing around with random scripts. And it can be extremely difficult to defend against. 
The next really common network attack is IP spoofing. If you don't know what an IP address, it's just kind of like the home address of your computer. Use a hacking technique used to gain unauthorized access to a computer system. And the hackers disguise their real IP addresses. And by spoofing that IP address, they can trick other computers into thinking that they're something that they're not. And they can use it to steal information. It's kind of like lying about your name in order to get into a party. My name is on that list. Let me in. And then they let you in. And so essentially you just kind of spoofed your way into that party in a way, if that makes sense. That is like the main gist of network security. That's definitely just a really broad view, simplified. The next really important aspect to cybersecurity is host and endpoint security. It refers to the measures taken to protect the computers and hosts that make up the network. So network is going data flowing from one to another. Your computer still needs to be protected by say antivirus. If a device is connected to the network, it's considered an endpoint. The issue with this is with the bring your own devices movement, these are often also needed to be protected. The endpoints can definitely reach hundreds and if not thousands, which makes it more difficult for the IT network infrastructure, host and endpoint detection people kind of to do their job. It includes laptops, printers, smartphones, etc. Some of the factors that can be put in for endpoint protection are machine learning classification uh, to detect zero day threat, advanced anti antivirus protection to protect, defend, and correct malware, proactive web security to ensure safe browsing on the web, email gateways to block phishing and social engineering attempts targeting the employees. A, an example of this is when the ABC Corporation experienced a data breach that exposed the sensitive information of millions of customers and the cause of the breach was traced back to the lack of endpoint security by failing to properly protect their data. ABC left themselves vulnerable to attack as a result their customer data was compromised and their reputation was tarnished. Since then, they have implemented endpoint security, but the damage was already done. The next really important aspect to cybersecurity and defense is data protection and encryption. The data is basically the lifeblood of many corporations and people have stated that it's the new currency. Keeping that data safe is extremely important as it's the livelihood of your business and probably a lot of your employees. So whether it is personal information, whether it's financial records or medical records, sensitive company secrets, national secrets, data needs to be protected from prying eyes. So that is when different security controls come in or measures to mitigate different vulnerabilities. One of them to do this is encryption, which is the process of transforming readable data into an unreadable format using a key to decode the information. Another way is user behavior analysis, which is the process of understanding how users interact with a particular system or service. And you can actually set up rules saying if they open this file and they do this, they're not allowed to open this file. You're being watched. Everything you do on your work computer, you're definitely uh, being watched. It will track that user's actions, identifying patterns and trends and using this information. There are many different ways to collect that, that user behavior on data. One common method is to use log files, which track every action used by the user within a system. An example of when data hasn't been protected and it led to millions of dollars in damage is with Equifax way back in 2017, which is a credit reporting agency. They experienced a data breach that affected over 147 million people and the personal information of customers, including social security numbers, birth dates, was assessed by hackers. So that violates confidentiality. And it was later revealed that this was because of a simple web vulnerability. You can look at OWASP top 10 if you want to further educate yourself on that. But essentially they had failed to encrypt their database, leaving customer information unprotected. 
And as a result, they had to pay $700 million in fines and damages along with a loss in reputation. If we look at here, like I have the how did this breach kind of occur? Well, essentially they did a scan for web vulnerabilities and the attackers found a vulnerability with Equifax portal servers. They were able to locate additional servers and log in credentials. And then they were able to remain hidden while maintaining presence. So they were still watching the network. They extracted this data over 76 days to avoid detection. It took Equifax quite a bit of time to even figure out that they had a hack. So they didn't have encryption. They also didn't have proper logging threat analytics in place, which leads me on to my next really important part of cybersecurity. And that is logging, monitoring, threat detection, and analytics. This isn't really something that people think of often when they think of cybersecurity, like, man, <laughs> I want to do logging. If you don't have proper logging and monitoring in place, you're never even going to know that an attack occurred. You might find out about it later when all of this information is released. If you don't know what logging is, it refers to tracking and recording all activity on a network or system. Everything that is done on a system usually has a, some type of log, depending on where you work and if they capture all of those logs because that's the biggest problem with logging is you have to have space to put all of those logs and store it that can get extremely expensive so by logging all activity you create a really detailed system on exactly what has happened on your network or host or endpoint network application and this can help you investigate any potential security breaches as well as track down any source of any malicious or unauthorized activity. And that's why you don't hear about breaches the day that they happened. Sometimes it takes them six or seven months to even find out that they had a breach. And additionally, these logs can be used in a legal setting later on. Monitoring of this is the real-time analysis of the activity to identify potential. I have monitored many logs in my lifetime looking for false positives different types of attacks that are happening. Not the most glamorous type of job, but you know, you have to do it. The third piece to this is threat detection, which is identifying specific incidents that may pose a risk to an organization. And then analytics, which is the fourth piece, uses data and statistical modeling to understand trends and patterns to better predict and protect against future threats. It helps you find these vulnerabilities before someone can exploit the vulnerability. And by monitoring the logs, you can protect your system from attack. An example of when this went wrong was back in 2015 with Anthem. They suffered a data breach that affected 8 million people. And the breach was possible because the company did not have sufficient logging to track user activity. This allowed the hackers to gain access to the system four months without being detected. As a result, millions of people had their personal information stolen, including their social security number and also medical records. The next important aspect to cybersecurity is Identity Access Management, or IAM. And this is very much overlooked. Identity and Access Management Controls is the process of granting or denying individuals or systems access to resources based on their identity and level of access they have been granted. It's essential to prevent unauthorized access data and systems. Really common IAM solutions are authentication, two-factor, authorization, access control lists. And in the early days, to put this more into perspective, many computers and companies did not put in place identity and access management controls, which led to many different attacks. There are a variety of IAM tools, and some of them are directory services such as Active Directory, privilege management tools such as Beyond Trust, Power Broker, or Centrified Direct Control, password management tools such as LastPass and 1Password, single sign-on solutions such as Okta or one log in. An example of this going on was way back in 2017, a hacker 
was able to gain access to the email accounts of several executives at HBO using stolen passwords. And if HBO had implemented two-factor authentication, I mean, the hacker wouldn't have been able to gain access. However, today there are still ways through phishing attacks. If you click on one of those links, the hacker can clone your web browser. The next really important aspect to uh, cybersecurity is vulnerability and configuration analysis. This is essentially the process of reviewing a system's configuration, files and settings to identify potential security threats. Vulnerability analysis is the process of identifying, investigating potential security vulnerabilities in systems and applications. Together, these processes help organizations identify and mitigate risks to their computer systems. A lot of times, really common vulnerabilities can be found through scanning tools. Manual review is often needed to find ones aren't common, such as zero day threats. By performing regular configuration and vulnerability analysis, organizations can help their systems from attack and compromise. A lot of times to find these vulnerabilities, this is when the ethical hacker comes in, penetration tester, everybody wants to do this. You're essentially trying to find vulnerabilities in systems so the blue team can go and remediate these issues. It mitigates that vulnerability from being exploited. A recent example in this is a target breach, which occurred when the attacker exploited a vulnerability in the HVAC system. Remember HVAC is an endpoint because if it's connected to the network, if you can get into that network, into just one single point, you can then pivot and do a lateral movement into other parts of the network. And the vulnerability had been missed during a previous configuration analysis, uh, allowing the attacker to access the company's network and steal millions of dollars of credit card details. And so there are uh, like a many different vulnerability scanning tools available. Some really common ones are Nessus, OpenBoss, they allow you to scan for vulnerabilities. But there are different checklists that auditors can go through to make sure the system is hardened. And I've done this on both sides. I've had a checklist where I went and I checked to see if all of those security settings were in place. This is also called an auditor. I've also been on the other side of that where I remediated those vulnerabilities that the auditor found. And these configuration checklists can be found in NIST. It really just depends on the system. They're also maybe called CIS controls or STIGs if you work in the DOD. They're essentially benchmarks for a variety of systems and applications to evaluate the security of your different hosts. The next really important aspect to cybersecurity is application security. If you don't know what an application is, it's essentially a program that's been installed on a device to provide added functionality. It can be divided into two categories, user applications and Systra, system applications. Some examples are say Google Chrome, Apple iTunes, Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Outlook. As you can imagine, if these have vulnerabilities in them, it could have detrimental effects. Web application vulnerabilities, the OWASP top 10 is really good to look at and it goes over the most common issues. Another common vulnerability in application security is insecure coding processes. Uh, poor coding practices can leave your device open to attack by hackers. So it's really important to have secure coding practices while developing. Yeah, after talking to my developer friends, security really isn't on the mind of the majority of companies especially if they're the startup level, security isn't really a thing. I have a friend who works at a startup and the founder is also the chief information security officer. An example of this gone wrong is way back in 2015, Ashley Madison had a website that allowed users to engage in extramarital affairs. The hackers assessed the site's user database and released the information online. This confidential data leaked included their email addresses and passwords and resulted in many people having issues in their marriage later. They were sued for $578 million. The next important aspect of cybersecurity is security operations and automation. And while this isn't essential, it will be the process of automating certain tasks that are typically done manually in order to improve efficiency. If you have ever done really menial work, 
Honestly, automation is a blessing. So this can include monitoring networks for malicious activity and identifying and responding to threats. By automating these tasks, organizations can reduce the time spent on manual labor, and then employees can do more high level type of work. So I'm really excited for this to come about along with artificial intelligence. I'm, I have high hopes that AI will be able to do all of these jobs in five to 10 years. That isn't to say that AI will take all of the jobs because it won't. AI can probably do it better than a human being and doesn't complain about looking at logs for eight hours a day. I did add this because I think it's going to be essential in the next step within cybersecurity is automation. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of cybersecurity, even though this video is a little bit long. I do have a course below that'll go more in depth into different cybersecurity topics. Again, below in that description, uh, check that out and check out all of my other videos if you're interested in starting your career in cybersecurity. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.